For babies with respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, tomorrow is made possible by InfoSurf Calfactant, a natural surfactant that's been helping babies breathe since 1998. InfoSurf quickly restores surface activity in the lungs and improves respiration in newborn babies with RDS. InfoSurf is manufactured exclusively in the USA by a unique calf-lung lavage method, yielding a natural surfactant that closely resembles native lung surfactant in both composition and activity. InfoSurf is indicated for the prevention of respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, in premature infants at high risk for RDS and for the treatment, rescue, of premature infants who develop RDS. InfoSurf decreases the incidence of RDS, mortality of RDS, and air leaks associated with RDS. Prophylaxis therapy at birth with InfoSurf is indicated for premature infants less than 29 weeks gestational age at significant risk for RDS. InfoSurf prophylaxis should be administered as soon as possible, preferably within 30 minutes after birth. InfoSurf therapy is indicated for infants less than or equal to 72 hours of age with RDS, confirmed by clinical and radiologic findings and requiring endotracheal intubation. InfoSurf is intended for intratracheal use only and should be administered under the supervision of clinicians who are experienced in the acute care of newborn infants with respiratory failure who require intubation. Store InfoSurf upright at temperature between 2 and 8 degrees centigrade. Warming of InfoSurf before administration is not necessary. If desired, InfoSurf can be warmed to room temperature by holding the vial in your hand or sitting at room temperature for a few minutes. Do not use artificial warming devices to warm InfoSurf. Resuspension of InfoSurf may be required. Gently swirl or repeatedly invert the vial to homogenize the suspension. Do not shake the vial to avoid excessive foaming. Visible flecks in the suspension and slight foaming at the surface are normal for InfoSurf, but excessive foaming should be avoided. Unopened, unused vials of InfoSurf that have warmed to room temperature can be returned to refrigerated storage within 24 hours for future use. These vials should be labeled with the time and date they were warmed to room temperature. InfoSurf should not be returned to the refrigerator more than once. Repeated warming to room temperature should be avoided. Vials with any unused material should be discarded after initial entry. To instill InfoSurf, follow these steps. Calculate the dose. Each dose of InfoSurf is 3 milliliters per kilogram body weight at birth. InfoSurf may be administered every 12 hours for a total of up to three doses. Doses are drawn up into a syringe from a single-use vial employing a 20-gauge or larger needle. Draw up two aliquots into two separate syringes using sterile technique and taking care to avoid excess foaming. After drawing up the dose, draw one milliliter of air into the syringe. This will help propel InfoSurf out of the catheter. The patient should be positioned supine with head midline. Ensure that the endotracheal tube, ET tube, is in the proper position and confirm the presence of expired carbon dioxide. In the absence of a carbon dioxide detector, observe bilateral chest rise and equal breath sounds. Confirm that the ET tube is patent and suction the ET tube prior to administration. Lastly, ensure the patient is clinically stable, heart rate, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation are appropriate. As with all surfactants, it is recommended to have two attendants involved in administering InfoSurf to the infant. One person is dedicated to instilling the surfactant, while the other attendant helps position the infant and monitors the infant's response. InfoSurf prophylaxis should be administered as soon as possible, 
preferably within 30 minutes after birth. Before installation, it is important to be sure that the ET tube is in the trachea and positioned above the carina. Correct tracheal placement can be confirmed by positive CO2 detection and chest rise. Proper positioning can be confirmed by bilateral breath sounds and ET tube depth at 6 plus weight in kilograms measured in centimeters at the lip. Attach the syringe to the catheter. A catheter is then placed in the ET tube for the installation of Infoserf. Advance the catheter to the distal end of the ET tube. Take care not to advance the catheter beyond the carina into either main stem bronchus. Hold the catheter with the syringe plunger up and the syringe outlet down. This will allow Infoserf to enter the catheter first, followed by air. Instill Infoserf at consistent rate as tolerated by the patient, followed by air. After the full aliquot is administered, withdraw the catheter from the ET tube. Proper ventilation delivers the surfactant to the terminal airways. Ventilate the infant per your hospital's guidelines of care. Use pressure and inspiratory times sufficient enough to create an adequate plateau pressure. Adequate support is assured by observing normal chest movement. This indicates the suspension has been pushed into the lung periphery and that the ventilation of the baby is appropriate. Auscultate the patient's lung fields for excessive ronchi, which may indicate the presence of liquid surfactant remaining in the airways. If detected, continue to ventilate the patient. If necessary, increase pressure and inspiratory time to displace all the liquid from the airways into the alveoli. InfoSurf's high potency, low viscosity, and high surfactant protein B concentration promote rapid distribution. Installation techniques exercised with other surfactants, such as the use of small test aliquots or slow administration, are not recommended with Infoserf. Use of such techniques could promote uneven distribution, ultimately resulting in uneven lung compliance. Assess the patient to verify that installation of the first aliquot has been completed successfully. Indications include normal chest rise, improved skin color, SpO2, CO2, and stable heart rate and respiratory rate. If the infant is stable, continue with administration of the second aliquot of suspension by repeating the previous steps. The administration of exogenous surfactants, including Infoserf, often rapidly improves oxygenation and lung compliance. Following administration of Infoserf, patients should be carefully monitored so that oxygen therapy and ventilatory support can be modified in response to changes in respiratory status. Repeat doses of Infoserf are determined by the infant's respiratory status. Transient episodes of the following have occurred during normal dosing procedures with Infoserf. Cyanosis, bradycardia, airway obstruction, and reflux of the suspension into the ET tube. If any of these events occur, take appropriate measures to alleviate the condition as follows. Immediately stop the administration of the suspension. Introduce endotracheal suctioning or reintubation as required. Regularly monitor the patient's progress prior to reinstallation. Resume installation after the patient is stable with appropriate monitoring. Instability, usually transient, responds to appropriate interventions. Cyanosis and bradycardia are caused by transient hypoxemia due to interruption of gas exchange and respond to re-establishment of effective breathing. Airway obstruction occurs when some of the liquid remains in the airway instead of being propelled into the alveoli. Using sufficient inspiratory pressure and inspiratory time after installation to displace all the liquid from the airways into the alveoli resolves the obstruction.
reflux may result from too rapid administration, insufficient ventilatory pressures or time, or deep placement of ET tube. To correct the problem, slow or pause administration or increase ventilation pressure and inspiratory times to propel the surfactant down the endotracheal tube. If the problem persists, confirm that the ET tube is properly placed in the trachea and positioned above the carina. Adjust if necessary and resume installation when clear. Replacing refluxed surfactant is usually not necessary. Patients whose ventilation becomes significantly impaired during or soon after administration may be experiencing mucus plugging of the endotracheal tube. This is often more common if pulmonary secretions were pronounced prior to dosing. Suctioning of infants prior to drug administration may decrease the chances of mucus plugs obstructing the endotracheal tube. If obstruction of the endotracheal tube from a mucus plug is suspected, and suctioning is unsuccessful in clearing the obstruction, remove and replace the occluded endotracheal tube immediately. As with all surfactants, it is recommended that the infant be monitored closely during administration and for several minutes after. This is a delicate procedure in fragile patients, but the potential to save these lives is substantial. To access our NICU resources and learn more about InfoSurf, visit InfoSurf.com. Important safety information. Warnings. InfoSurf is intended for intratracheal use only. Following administration of InfoSurf, patients should be carefully monitored so that oxygen therapy and ventilatory support can be modified in response to changes in respiratory status. InfoSurf therapy is not a substitute for neonatal intensive care. Optimal care of premature infants at risk for RDS and newborn infants with RDS who need endotracheal intubation requires an acute care unit organized, staffed, and equipped, and experienced with intubation, ventilator management, and general care of these patients. Transient episodes of endotracheal tube reflux, cyanosis, bradycardia, and airway obstruction have occurred, which require stopping InfoSurf administration and taking appropriate measures to alleviate the condition. Precautions an increased proportion of patients with both intraventricular hemorrhage, IVH, and paraventricular leukomalacia, PVL, was observed in InfoSurf treated in the InfoSurf ExoSurf neonatal controlled trials. This did not occur in the InfoSurf Cervanta trials. Common complications of prematurity and RDS in controlled trials. The incidence of other common complications of prematurity, apnea, Patent ductus arteriosus, intracranial hemorrhage, severe intracranial hemorrhage, sepsis, pulmonary air leaks, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, pulmonary hemorrhage, and necrotizing enterocolitis were similar in InfoSurf treated and the active control treated patients. Common adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions associated with InfoSurf dosing procedures in the controlled trials were cyanosis, airway obstruction, bradycardia, reflux of surfactant into the endotracheal tube, requirement for manual ventilation, and reintubation. To learn more about Oni Biotech and about InfoSurf, visit InfoSurf.com.